Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the inverse square law and some other photography terms. So I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. I make videos like this about technique, about, I guess, philosophy. This would be technical stuff, uh, some live shoots when I can. Um, and right now I'm doing these everyday kind of short things, answering people's questions. So if you guys have questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, if you want, subscribe for more videos like this. But anyways, um, so I had a conversation back and forth. I'm sorry, I did not write down the name. I wrote down the, the thing I was supposed to talk about, but not the name of the person, so I apologize. Um, you know, and they said, uh, could you explain something like the inverse square law uh, so that when I'm talking to photographers, I don't seem like, I don't know what I'm talking about or whatever. And I think this is interesting because that's one of those terms. There's a few terms like this, and I'll probably make a few videos like this because I'm trying to keep these short. Um, it's one of those terms that people throw out there a lot, and I'm not sure everybody completely understands it as far as the math. And there's plenty of great videos that people actually show diagrams and blah, blah, blah. And if I had a bunch of equipment here, I would, you know, multicam system like I normally use, I would basically set it up and show you. But I'll try to explain it. Um, essentially, it applies to light, of course, and things like gravity and, and, you know, a lot of different things. But basically, the idea is that the distance from the subject, um, so the, the intensity, we'll call it, right, is the, the distance, uh, the inverse square of the distance, right? So basically, what that means, right, so a normal person talk, what that means is that if I take something and I move it, let's say it's five feet away, and I move it to ten feet away, so it's twice as far, it will actually be one quarter the intensity. It won't be half the intensity. And that's super important when we're trying to figure out like uh, how to set up, where to place our lights for ratios, how to move things back and forth. I mean, it, ratios in photography, even though I don't necessarily abide by, and I get asked, a lot of people ask me, what's the ratio between this side of the face and that side of the face? That stuff, you know, I, I do it to taste basically, I, till, till I feel like it looks good, which, you know, I don't follow certain recipes for that. Um, but ratios when you're talking about kind of setting lights up, like let's say I know that I want, let's say I have no light meter, I don't know, you're using a camera that somehow there's no light meter in it, and I know I want my background, you know, to be brighter, let's say, than my subject, and I have the same light on my background and my subject. Well, the only way that I can truly accomplish that is to have the light closer to the background. And I guess if you busted a ruler out, you could actually figure out exactly how close to make it, you know, one stop, two stops, because remember that each stop of light is double or half. So, it, you know, we, if something is a quarter of the amount of power, it is actually uh, two stops, not one, not, uh, yeah, it's two stops. So basically, for instance, if I'm, so when you're doing this math, sometimes it's a little confusing because also when you're talking about f-stops, they're half and, you know, half each time. So that's why I think it gets a little confusing. But most of the time that math is not really necessary. We have TTL, we have meters, we have digital cameras, you know, we can get all that stuff done. But just kind of knowing in your head that that's a thing is super important. So in the question, the reason the back and forth was I asked because there was a black background. And I said, well, did you put a black background back there like a cloth or did you just use the inverse square law? And that's kind of how this conversation came up. So what I meant in that case was that if I have, let's say I have this pet paper, because it's something I have, and I'm going to light this in this background back here, right? I can, using the inverse square, I can basically move my, uh, my pad of paper closer to my light source, right? Or further, in this case, something further from my background. And those two things will actually make the background darker. Um, you can move the light and the subject further from the background, right? Or you could just move the subject closer to the, to the light, depending on, you know, your situation. If you don't have a light that is um, adjustable, for instance, you might have to move the subject and the light to get the exposure you want. Um, other times you can move them both, you know. Uh, so that's kind of it. You know, that's that's basically inverse square. It just is, you know, it, it's the actual formula. But when people say it generally in conversation, all they're really talking about is moving the light further or closer to your subject in ratio to its background or other things to make, uh, you know, to make it lighter or brighter. And again, coming just to make this longer than it needs to be. Um, <laughs> If you're talking about what I talked about at the beginning, like, well, I mean, I have flat light on me. Um, but if you had like a shadowy, you know, let's say a light over here that's that, say you had two lights that were equal and they were pointing on either side of the face, don't light like this. But let's say that you were doing that. Uh, you could put them equal to, and assume they're the same power and they're exactly, say they're each in a softbox, they're the same light. You put them the same distance away and expose for it, then the face is basically, uh, you know, uh, lit equally on both sides. If you move one further back, and keep the exposure the same, the one side that you're moving back will get darker, right? If you move this further back and then expose for this side that now with the light's further away, this side will be brighter or overexposed. So you can basically use that to make ratios. So now imagine the lights aren't side by side like this, but one is 
here, and that's your key light, and the other one is, let's say, your hair light. Now, using the same thing, right, we can now make the hair light brighter or darker based on our key light by moving them in and out, you know, in ratio to each other. And that's how you would use it in actual, uh, you know, actual use, basically. That's like a, a more fundamental, like you're on set and you need to make this work. But again, most lights we have these days, you can adjust the power. So it's not really that big of an issue. Uh, it's only when you don't have uh, the ability to adjust the power. Because normally, because the, so all this is happening, right? And normally you don't necessarily want to just move your lights around to adjust the power because, or the ratio, because moving the light around will affect, you know, how hard or soft it is because it will affect its size relative to the subject. So that's the second thing I'm going to talk about because they're related. Actually, on my list, I had something else to talk about, but as my brain is going, this makes sense. So now let's take the same thing. I've got this light right now. Um, let's say I have two small soft boxes and I've got them and I'm going to use them to light a subject. I can't change the power. So I want to do, let's say, a, a beautiful key light and I want to do a brighter hair light. Now, one issue here is that if I want my hair light to be brighter, then it needs to be closer, right? But if it's closer, it's actually softer as well. So you keep that in mind. So in this case, you probably would get your key light where you want it so that you have the look that you want on the face as far as hardness and softness of light, then move the hair light in closer to make it overexposed. You wouldn't move your key light back and then change your exposure because if you did that, your key light would get hard. Because remember, hardness, softness is based on the size of the source relative to your subject, right? And that is easily, right here, the light is, I'm doing it in reverse to me, but you're my subject. Here, the light's very small, right? But if I move the light closer to you, it becomes big, right? So this same light is hard for you, soft. You know, I'm actually the opposite. So on my end, when it's here, it's closer. It's closer to me. It's bigger. But, you know, for, for what you can see, hard light, soft light, right? Because it's bigger. It's bigger relative to the subject. So that's super important um, when, you're, when you're doing this to think of that. You've got the ratio of light based on your inverse square law. You know, which one's going to be brighter or darker based on where you put it. And then also how hard or soft the light is. Now, again, we generally are not trapped like that. The, the, the real solution in that case there would be to remove the softbox, for, you know, or maybe the diffusion from the hair light, and then that way it would be brighter because there'd be less diffusion. But assuming you couldn't do that, you know, you're using something that can't be changed, um, then you would have to play around with your, your ratios using the inverse square law. And that's essentially how we would do it. You know, that, that's basically it. Um, you just want to think about the distance from the light to your subject and from your subject to the background is, is the most common way that we use it. But it could also be, uh, you know, fill light, key light type deal, right? And then you also want to um, think about, uh, you know, that's your lighting ratio. And then you also want to think about how that affects the size of it, because the size of it, of course, affects how soft or hard it is, um, which is one reason why, again, going in full circle here and things that we talked about before in many demos, one reason why I say, and a lot of times when I say this, people are like, hmm, I don't usually do that. And I think a lot of people don't do this. I almost always use a larger fill light than a key light. So most people are like, well, I want a big soft key, so I'm going to make my key light, my main light source, the biggest light I have. But the problem with that is, generally speaking, your fill light is not going to be as close to your subject as your key light. You know, if, I'm, if you're lighting me in a, in a classic fashion, you're going to have one light here, and then the fill light's probably going to actually be, you know, well, you can't see it, but it would be basically, uh, you know, here, I don't think you can probably see that. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you'd have it like behind you or, or, you know, over the camera or, you know, something like that because you'd want it to be, um, uh, you know, not cause its own set of shadows. So what you're going to do generally is use what's called on access fill. It's the most common way to do it. You're going to put the fill light behind the photographer or right above the photographer's position. Uh, then you're going to light your subject, you know, at a 45, let's say, if we're doing that kind of lighting. So in this case, if I take two, again, equal soft boxes and I put my fill light behind me as the photographer, right? Now it's going to be harder and I don't want a hard fill generally, generally speaking. So I'm gonna use the smaller light up front because I can move that in really close. Moving it closer makes it softer. Moving the other one back further makes it, makes it harder. But if it's softer to start with, larger to start with, then that balances it. So hopefully all that kind of works together. I mean, just talking about it, I think these things are a lot easier to show. Uh, and if this is completely confusing, I will try to set up something where I can actually show. I have a couple of lights here, so uh, let's see what I can do. But uh, again, I'm just going to do one more time over it. Inverse square is really just uh, the actual science behind the idea of when you move, how, how much light you lose or gain by moving your light closer or further from your subject. 
hard or soft is controlled by the size of your, your light to your subject. And I guess I should say one final thing, just in case people don't understand, a hard light is basically, hard soft is generally the descriptor of your shadow edge. So hard lights create a very abrupt and hard shadow edge, usually falling into dark, uh, you know, very, very dark uh, darkness. That doesn't have to be the case. You can have hard light with fill, let's say, and then it wouldn't be as dark, but you'd still have an abrupt edge. Soft light, on the other hand, is when the the light kind of like fades into the shadow. So it's a, it's a softer transition, right? Kind of like a blend versus a cut. So both types of light are really good and used for different things. But uh, when you want to control that, it's controlled by size. Size. That is the most important thing. If somebody says this thing is a soft light when they show it to you, they can't actually, almost, almost never can they say, yeah, that's actually the, always the case because it's really relative to size, right? If I have a five foot octagon, it's almost always going to be soft. But if I stood my, per, my, my subject, you know, 30 feet away from it, it's not going to be soft. It's going to be hard because it's going to be tiny compared to them. I mean, you probably wouldn't light somebody with a five foot octagon 30 feet away. But you might with, let's say, a bronze calipara, because those are often used for that kind of stuff. They're very big, and they put them far away, and they're very intense, and they're used to create kind of like softer than a little tiny light source, but still hard-ish kind of light that has good coverage, and it's even. So yeah, maybe we'll talk about paras one day, because there's this whole parabolic thing, but uh, that's for another video. <laughs> In any case, hopefully this all makes sense. Uh, if it was even more confusing, <laughs> let me know specifically what part was confusing. I'll go over it again. Um, I think a lot of it is just practice. I mean, literally take a, uh, you know, if you've got no equipment with you, take a, a, a book or a piece of cardboard or a box or something and put it here, put a little subject here, what it might, might be, a salt and pepper shaker, take a light, it could be any light, a flashlight or whatever, and then move the light, move the subject, uh, all relative to the background, and you'll see how the light changes. You'll, you'll definitely see the intensity change. Um, obviously, with more space, it's easier to really show it, but you can do it, you know, and, and, and you'll actually see how the light actually changes. And that will help you understand it when you have a subject in front of you and you want to manipulate it. If you have not already, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell so you get all kinds of videos. I am trying to post every single day, so uh, hopefully that will continue. Hopefully people are doing uh, okay still or well. Uh, you know, we're moving forward here, trying to be creative, even though we're mostly having to stay inside. So hopefully you guys are, are well. Um, you know, if there's anything, again, you want to ask, I will, uh, it can even be something super simple. Uh, not that it's simple, but to a lot of people, this is something they know. So maybe it's like, mm, I don't want to ask because I might seem silly. Ask because, you know, I've got a whole list of, of my notebook. I've got a whole list of little photo terms that we use a lot that maybe people don't fully understand that I'm going to try to like kind of talk about as opposed to showing, um, because I can't necessarily show, uh, show them, you know, because of the situation. In any case, I'll see you tomorrow.